Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks. This is the Timmy Talks Duelist podcast series, the series where I read to you my favorite articles from the Duelist magazine. And today we are going to dive into Arabian Nights because I'm going to read to you the article called A History of the Arabian Nights. It's written by Beverly Marshall Sailing and it was featured in the first Duelist magazine. So this was when Arabian Nights just got out. And remember, this is the first expansion of magic. Flying carpets, gins, Aladdin's lamp. Thanks to the Arabian Nights, these bits of Eastern folklore sound as familiar to Western ears as fairies, leprechauns, and Jack's beanstalk. Like Western stories, the Arabian Nights tales bring alive a timeless world of wondrous magic and fantastic beings, where a wandering merchant may be a long lost relative, and a good tale well told can save a life. Like King Shariar, who cannot kill his new bride until he hears the end of her story, readers cannot stop in the middle of one of Shahrazad's lovely little tales. Readers can find something to suit every taste somewhere in the tales, which range from moral fables and etiquette lessons to romances, farces and even a few racy comedies. The form of the tales is as intriguing as their content. Instead of ending one tale before beginning the next, Shahrazad inserts another story to illustrate a point or explain a metaphor, then another to provide background on one of the characters, and perhaps yet another one just to make a joke. When she does manage to work through all the layers and finish a tale, she immediately starts in on another one, telling Shariar and the reader that this new story is even more strange and fantastic than all the ones before it. The variety of the tales included in the Arabian Nights reflects the differing imagination of the many authors who first created them. Originally, the tales came from many different cultures, growing out of the rich storytelling traditions of India, Persia, Arabia, Egypt, Babylonia, Israel, Greece, North Africa and possibly even China. They were first recorded as a distinct group sometime in or before the 9th century CE, according to a text fragment that mentions the Alf Layal Va Layal, literally the thousand nights and a night. Though this title suggests that there were a thousand and one stories, there were actually far fewer, perhaps little more than 200. The thousand in the title intended only to indicate a large number, and the extra night was added to alleviate the possible bad luck associated with even numbers. Though they received little attention from Arabic scholars, published versions of the tales continued to flourish, especially in Cairo in the 13th to 16th centuries. The Arabian Nights made its western debut in 1704-1717, when J. Antoine Galland first translated it into French. Galland, primarily interested in the literacy value of the tales, based his text on a variety of sources and chose to include a few tales that had not previously been considered part of the Arabian Nights. Many other translations of this era were based on Galant's, including one or two Arabic versions that were later held up as original Arabic texts. E. W. Lane first introduced parts of the Arabian Nights to English-speaking audiences in 1839-1841, but his version was incomplete. A full English version wasn't available until John Payne's 1882-1884 edition. Payne's translation, written in the Gothic style popular at the time, appealed strongly to the romantic longing for exotic fantasy, popularizing the Arabian Nights and becoming the standard English version of the tales. The rather florid 1885-1888 translation by explorer Sir Richard Burton eventually became more widely distributed than Payne's but Burton relied so heavily on Payne's version that many scholars consider his footnotes on Arabic customs his only real contribution to his own book. Many modern translations of the tales still owe some of their phrasing to Payne. One exception to this is the 1900 translation by Hussein Hadavi, who based his version on a 14th century Arabic manuscript. Though modern readers are less interested in magic and fantasy than those of Payne and Burton's day, the main attraction of the Arabian Nights is the same as it has always been. The chance to visit the fabled Golden Age of Baghdad, when Harun al-Rashid was commander of the faithful and even the most unlearned villager could spin tales of wonder. 
Their inherent magical flavor and exotic feel provide the perfect setting for the first Magic the Gathering expansion set. And of course, that expansion set was called The Arabian Nights. And it is really interesting, you know, to learn a little bit about the background of that set by reading this article, A Brief History of the Arabian Nights, written by Beverly Marshall Sailing, featured in The Duelist number one. For now, thank you very much for listening. And before you go, please leave a like, a comment, and consider sharing this on your socials. And maybe in the comments, it's nice to let me know what your favorite card of the Arabian Nights expansion is. For now, thank you very much for listening to another podcast episode right here on Timmy Talks. And now it's time to go to that beautiful, lovely, fantastic and scroll with all the supporters of Timmy Timmy Talks. Ik het was fikker te somba kazik.